This is examples part two of section 3.5. So let's look at the degree of the denominator. This time the degree is two. So we're gonna divide every term by x squared. So the limit becomes six x to the three halves over x squared over seven x squared over x squared plus two over x squared. Now when we reduce this, we have to take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent, which is going to give me six x to the negative one half. And I need to keep my notation here. And then this will just reduce to seven and you still have two over x squared. Now this has to be written as a fraction. You cannot leave it as a negative exponent. So this becomes six over x to the one half over seven plus two over x squared. Now remember, as x goes to infinity, any constant over x to a positive exponent will go to zero. Again, any constant over x to a positive exponent will go to zero. So the numerator will go to zero, the denominator will go to seven plus zero, leaving you with zero over seven, and zero divided by seven is just zero. Now we have the fourth example. So here we have to be careful because notice you have a square root. So if you wanna figure out the degree of the denominator, you do have to take the x squared term because its degree is higher than this, but you also have to factor in that there's a square root in there. And what is the square root of, um, of x? The square, or I'm sorry, the square root of x squared is actually just equal to x. So then what is the true power of that first term? That true power is one. So we should only be dividing by x to the one, or just x. So when we do that, we're gonna get two over x, the square root of x squared minus x over x, because that's one big fat term. Now, you can take the denominator, and you can put this x inside the square root, but if you do that, it becomes x squared because the square root of x squared is x. Then you can further simplify the denominator by separating it into two fractions. So you get one minus one over x if you reduce these. This would be top exponent, which is a one minus two, which is a negative one, and a negative one exponent means there's an x to the one in the denominator. Then finally, I can take the limit. Whether I'm approaching negative infinity or positive infinity, any constant over an infinity will get to zero. Any constant over an infinity will go to zero. So what I end up with here is zero over the square root of one minus zero, or zero over the square root of one, zero over one, which is just still zero.